Ever since I can remember, I wanted to be fit. As a kid, I spent my days outside chopping wood, working out, and doing generally manly things. My parents gave me a very strict diet and exercise regimen. I have never eaten carbs or sugar in my life. Every day started out exactly the same. I would wake up at 5 a.m., do a 10-minute cold plunge, and warm up my body with 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups, and 100 squats. After a carefully digested breakfast of salt water and raw beef stock, I would meditate for exactly 7 minutes. In that moment, I would recollect all the memories from the previous day and flush them away, ready to start anew. Since I was 8 years old, I felt a profound connection between my mind and body. What was lost in my body was found in my mind, and vice versa. There was never a moment where both could falter. Anyways, let's jump ahead a little bit. After winning four straight national championships as the starting quarterback, point guard, pitcher, and cheerleading captain at my high school, I would go on to seek my greatest achievement yet, the world's most fit man. I decided that it was best to pursue these interests on my own, so I packed my things and said goodbye. In a moment of self-reflection, I looked back on my childhood. I pictured all the countless hours spent training and the dreams of fame and fortune. Ready to start a new chapter, I opened the door to my brand new life. It was a cold autumn day, with the overcast skies implying that winter was already on its way. As someone who couldn't stand the frigid temperatures, I was excited for it. You see, I thrived in uncomfortable conditions. I lived on the edge of insanity, doing the things that nobody else was willing to do so that I could easily surpass them. The naked truth is that I wholeheartedly believed I was better than the others, both mentally and physically. You could call it a god complex, but I preferred to call it unbridled confidence. It was this trait alone that sent me on the blazing trail of success. As I quietly strolled across the landscape, I could feel that something was different. This was no ordinary day. It was time for the extraordinary. A booming voice echoed across the land. You have shown great strength. The deeply familiar voice resonated within my head. And for that effort, you shall be rewarded. My eyes fixated on the horizon. From now on, you shall be called the Ganiac. I felt a hidden power light up like a flame within me. It was this moment that I had been waiting for. My breath lingering, I got up from the floor. I had just completed the most push-ups in a row in my life, achieving over 1,000 straight. The ringing in my ears grew louder as I looked around. In shock, others darted their eyes away, desperate to avoid eye contact. Was there something wrong with me? I sat down and closed my eyes for what felt like an eternity. I had finally become the monster that I had dreamed of. I had the body of a warrior and the mind of a philosopher. I could crush my enemies with nothing more than a glare. I could impose my will on the weak with my perfect body. However, it wasn't enough. I needed to prove that I was more fit than anyone else on the planet. I needed to show everyone who doubted me exactly what they had missed. Revenge is best served with a touch of disgrace, I thought. They deserved to feel inferior to me. So I entered the competition and got second place. The blood in my saliva hurt to swallow. What had I become? I lost all touch with reality. My daily run went from one mile, to 10 miles, to 100 miles. I ran from everything, all my problems, all my dreams, all my successes, and all my failures. I ran from the people who hated me. I ran from the people who loved me. And most of all, I ran from myself. I faked a smile to console those who passed with concerned looks. Something inside me told me to run after them. I don't know what happened after that. I awake to the sound of a new day. I would love to sleep a little while longer, but nowadays I prefer the physical world to my dreams, as sweet as they are. Hi, my name is Evan. I am the most fit man in the world. I wanna teach you how to be fit too. My only problem is that I don't know what fitness means anymore. I used to believe it was purely a selfish act for those who value vain physical characteristics. Then I thought it just meant being really strong. What I can't figure out is why it even matters at all. We're all going to live short, uneventful lives that won't make an impact on the world. Why should I care about the future? There's no way to make a change as just one person, right? Wrong. I finally have it all figured out. Personal improvement is the most selfless act a person can take. You see, when you decide that your future is important, that rubs off on the people around you. They can see what kind of person you're becoming. Some may be inspired, some may be proud, some may be jealous. Regardless, you've made a statement. Those who are pessimistic will always find despair in a beautiful situation. But you're an optimist. You know that there's a diamond in the rough, no matter how small it may be. Now there's just one thing left to do. There's a problem with the fitness industry. It shouldn't exist at all. We live in a world that demands our attention at every moment. Pay attention to me. You shouldn't have to be sold the idea of moving your body. Your inherent human qualities have been cast aside as a specific, tangible thing that you must complete. Why don't we treat the human body as it truly is? A liquid machine built to move, think, and create. 
We are not made to sit idly by and watch time pass. We are not made to have everything we need shipped to us as quickly as possible. We are not made to crave entertainment at every moment. How does this relate to the fitness industry? Well, I'm glad you asked. The fitness industry relies on a society that perpetuates self-serving biases. You want to be fit so that you can show off. You want to be fit so that you can look good. Now, I know there are many of you out there that don't operate like this, and that's fantastic. The problem is that for the vast majority, the only time you'll catch them working out is if there's something in it for them as quickly as possible. So what do we do as a fitness-focused community to change that narrative? Of course, the answer spawns from self-improvement. In your journey, you'll begin to realize that there's a lot of unnecessary stuff going on. I say, simply don't indulge in it. Fast food only exists because we see it as a need. It isn't cheaper, it certainly isn't healthier, it's only only more convenient. Alcohol doesn't help you have more fun. Your body reacts that way because it's being poisoned. Losing sleep isn't a business move. It's going to kill you. Sitting in front of a screen makes you lose all connection to the physical world. I'm not here to tell you how to live your life. I want what's best for the human race. I envision a future society where we determine that life is worth living. And in order for us to not just survive, but thrive, we first need to be fit enough to try. If you're still watching and want to make an impact but don't know how, here's what to do. Step 1. Seek unselfish improvement. Spend time developing a skill that you really want to learn. Step 2. Turn that passion into a purpose. Using everything you've learned, create something. It can be a piece of art, a video, a movie, a game, a business, a protest, a cause. Just do it. Step 3. Remain optimistic about humanity. We may never create a world of peace and prosperity. I can promise you one thing though. I will sooner die than stop trying to build a better tomorrow. So what does all this mean in the end? This video didn't really end up being about fitness, did it? Well, in a sense it has everything to do with fitness. At least, in the lens I see it from now. Fitness is an enigma. It can mean whatever you desire. To me, it starts from the inside. Seeing that there's a version of you out there that wants to be more. Believing that you actually have what it takes to make it happen. And carrying out the actions that take you where you're destined to go one step at a time. That's what fitness means to me. And in that sense, I truly am the most fit man in the world. I'm fit to be me, and you're fit to be you.